the airport. I got through the security. I had a fart in my carry-on bag. Y'all, how I go figure. I don't have no idea uh, how I got that fart in there. You know how it is when you're going from point A to point B. I guess I end up collecting spoons and forks when I'm going from point A to point B without even realizing it. I just told them throw it away with nothing I could do with it. I didn't got into too much trouble about it. I'm not going to be getting in trouble with it on the next flight. It's like, please, just throw it away. <laughs> so I didn't even know I had it. But anyway, y'all, uh, it has a nice... Uh, store up there but i don't feel like going up the stairs but my arm is hurting now y'all so i think i need to go over to the bar <laughs> and get a beer maybe a snack because the flight does not leave until nine o'clock so they say but you know they didn't even have my ticket from Paris to Houston, even though they sent me an email only about the flight from Paris to Houston, and then they're going to say, once you register for the ticket and it's confirmed, you get the information. No, they just sent me that email, like, two days in a row. But anyway, y'all, success with the boarding passes. <laughs> the most high I got my back. Because <laughs> I was like, look, I paid for it now. I need my ticket. Because he almost made me wait till I get to Paris for them to issue me another boarding pass. That would have been the height of laziness. I told him last time I end up being stuck in the UK because they didn't issue me a boarding pass for a ticket from here. So they improved y'all. At least this, I got it. So thank God Paris to Houston, I got it. And you have to pay your thousand the Lassie exit fee or US dollars twenty dollars. Well guys, it's seven twenty PM Gambian time and the departure time is eight forty five. Eight forty five. So technically I have an hour and a half left. I left Davo House at five thirty. And when you end up at the airport they're gonna ask you where did you stay? For your time in the Gambia. I just told them Davo House, y'all. Technically, it's true. It's like, what difference do it make? <laughs> you can stay in more than one place in six months' time, and they don't really care anyway, just to have something on the paper. A lady helped me fill out the paper because I couldn't find my pen. And when she got done, she like, can you help me, please? I have children. But I was ready for her, baby. I already had a hundred dollars separated <laughs> to give anybody who helped me fill out those papers because I hate to fill out the papers. Then I know the deal that they always want a hundred dollars for helping you fill it out. <laughs> you don't have to, but that's the tip they like. So I was ready for her baby. At first I didn't have but two hundreds, but I counted out my money. <laughs> and I had the exact amounts separated in the folder. <laughs> so I was prepared <laughs> with a smile on my face. <laughs> now y'all, with all this worrying about if it's a fork in my purse and the, the bag getting x-rayed like three or four times <laughs> till the poor lady found a fork. She like, I know what I saw, I know what I saw. Who, Eureka, she found a fork. I'm glad I didn't get it to know no trouble for the fork. I'm like, oh Lord. I'm like, just throw it away, please. <laughs> like, what the heck else would I do with a stupid fork? I don't need no fork on the plane. <laughs> now, if I want to, I could go in the gift shop and buy all kind of stuff. But you got to get through security, y'all. That's the main thing. So anyway, I all to go. Let me go try to relax at the bar. Well, guys, I'm at the bar having me a crystal. My favorite drink, y'all. I need to relax a little bit before I get on that plane after that park yesterday. I guess y'all better make sure whenever y'all get knives and forks and stuff, y'all make sure y'all don't put them in y'all suitcase. 
by accident. Anyway, it is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> and the lady was nice. She didn't try to interrogate me or nothing but why did you forget this for kid of thing? It's like I'm old, y'all. I forgot. I didn't even know it was in there. I really didn't. This is the lightest I've traveled going back, y'all. My church lady had it's so lightweight. And otherwise the candy inside of the purse. I thought it interrogation about the fork, y'all. I almost forgot my laptop. <laughs> oh, I had to put everything together, y'all. I did. I had to put everything back together. <laughs> slowly by slowly, but it, it's done now. <laughs> it's all good. Guys, it's five something in the morning. I'm in Paris. I'm telling you, I'm so tired. Didn't get to get up and pee or nothing. I'm not leaving here till around 10 o'clock, so I have plenty of time to use the restroom and brush my teeth, stuff like that. Let me see. Corresponding flights. I'm getting ready to go. Well, guys, I finished the security thing. Now I have to go to gate K41. I already took a train here, a couple of es escalators, uh, a walking sidewalk. It's a long way, but at least they give you time to get from one plane to another. Well, guys, I'm in Paris at the airport. I'm waiting for my flight to leave. I'll be here probably about another two and a half hours. It's around seven something in the morning here. The flight leaves the well, boards around nine something. Guys, while this is on my mind, they do not have a uh, wheelchair access at the airport in the Gambia. So if you really need to use the wheelchair, you gonna have to go someplace else, y'all. It's not wheelchair accessible. I saw a little old man get wheeled to the plane. And then after he got out of the, well, yeah, wheeled to the plane. And then when he got to the steps, he had to get out of the wheelchair and walk up the steps. I was wondering, does this poor little old man walk at all? But he had to have some kind of major health problems that he barely could walk up one step at a time. The person from the airport called himself helping him by walking behind him and encouraging him to go up the next flight upstairs, run the next step. And when he got to the top, he was just so tired or frustrated that he had a full-blown, what appeared to be a temper tantrum, but he actually could have been having some type of respiratory distress or cardiac problems who knows y'all who knows and i ain't gonna lie when i'm when i'm going around i ain't acting like molly the nurse anymore i'm retired y'all all i can do is pray for you <laughs> that you'll be okay till you get somewhere where you can get to the doctor but anyway, y'all, just a heads up, if you really do need wheelchair to go to a plane to travel, Gambia should be off your list. Not doable, y'all. Not doable. You have to walk up the stairs to get to the plane. You have to walk down the stairs to get to the plane. And it's a lot of stairs, y'all. I had to go one step at a time and be some rude people behind me. Just be rushing like the plane going somewhere without them or something. <laughs> so I just stopped and just like, just go ahead. <laughs> just go ahead, you know? Because there was no needing me 
getting into no tantrum myself over no food, trying to rush up the stairs at the airport, I mean at the plane, for no reason. Because the plane wasn't taking off till everybody get on the plane anyway. But that's how some people are, they have no patience. And anyway, y'all, I do miss everybody already. And y'all know I always miss Mama Africa. Mom be hearing on negative reports from me. Like they say, whose report will you believe? Hey, I'm giving a good report. Because I look on the bright side. I'm not feeding the bad wolf. <clears throat> People are the same everywhere. Experiences can happen anywhere. You just have to be open for them to happen, whether good or bad. I'm a hit with my purple, y'all. They said purple rain, purple rain. When they checked my ticket, you know, the flight attendants, two of them, they funny, y'all. Anyway, I'm in 25C, perfect seat, aisle seat. 25, not too far back in the plane, and it's right next to the toilet, so perfect for me. I can go actually when I want to go on this flight, not like the other one where I was sandwiched in between two women who wasn't too friendly. It was from the motherland, but the guests weren't all that friendly, but they didn't even like to go to the restaurant. And y'all know I love going to the restaurant, so I had to just not think about it. <laughs> I went when I first got on the plane, and that was it, y'all. That was it. Because they both act like they were sleeping most of the flight when they wasn't eating. Such is life. <laughs> well, guys, I landed in Houston, Texas right now. I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, y'all. I was so tired of being on that plane, I didn't know what to do. And I walked a little bit, now I'm taking a little break. I go through customs with the, uh, I have uh, that frequent flyer thing, so I'll use that. I'm getting ready to go through global entry, y'all, global entry. That's the card you get when you fly a lot. <laughs> So you don't have to go through regular customs. We'll see if it works this time. Last time it acted like it didn't work. Then I went through customs and they said I was already checked. But they didn't give me a receipt, y'all. Not with my name on anyway. I'm on that little thing that's a walking sidewalk, y'all. Here's the street. I remember I was on it <laughs> when I'm at home, y'all. And remember, oh, I need to win the lottery so I can ride business class. <laughs> well, y'all, I finally got my bags. I've been waiting about an hour. I was praying big time. I think I turned into a real African. My prayers was answered. I got both my bags last time. I had to wait for one a whole two days for them to deliver it to my house. So, hallelujah. Now I'm just waiting to get picked up, y'all. Okay. Okay, guys. I am back in Galveston, Texas after visiting with my sister and brother in Houston. Because that's who picked me up at the airport. So I enjoyed visiting with them. Hadn't seen them, of course, in six months. And uh, now I'm getting what I need for groceries for the house. Well, y'all, happy Sunday. The birds are singing in the background. I'm at my house in Galveston. Just trying to recuperate from the long trip. 
I wanted to finish this film by wrapping up a summation of my feelings of uh, my last trip and the trip before that, the difference. Well, y'all, I'm trying to make it as smart and sweet as possible. Even though I can upload things in the USA, because the internet is good at my house. It's fiber optics, y'all. I already updated my camera and hadn't been updated in six months <laughs> or more. Because the internet was too slow in the, in the most, uh, in, the, in the mother man. <clears throat> Even if I paid like 4000 and something after paying the initial 1009 trying to get the internet faster. You know, you just be hoping upon hope that the next time it'll be better. <laughs> but it wasn't. But y'all, the difference is my support system grew. I went the first time, well, not the first time, but the time before this, uh, I just had started the Food Forest Project. I got to meet the initial people that were the volunteers that was going to help me make it happen. I got to meet the, the uh, manager of the land that was gonna be watching my land for me while I was there. Got to put the banter bar up and plant a few trees. That's what's accomplished in three months, y'all. Three months. And I felt like I needed to stay longer so I could do more because things grow, go so slowly in the motherland. And when I came back, I, I was taken to my car by the airport transit. And when I left, I had to pay $600 about for parking because I had drove my car to the parking lot. Compared to this time when my support systems grew, not just in the motherland, but here too, y'all. I gained a sister here on this side and a brother. My sister Janice volunteered y'all to take me to the airport and ask me to just let my car stay with her so I don't have to pay for parking. That'd be one less thing to have to pay back on that credit card. And so I drove my car to her house. That was in Houston, the same place as the airport. And she took me to the airport with a smile on her face. So I got dropped off with love here in America, y'all. That's why I say I love my country because my country is not just all of the bad things. It's also all of the good things, y'all. It's all of the good things, too. The wonderful people here. The beautiful places here, not just the bad, it's a yin and yang everywhere. And I realize that every day that I wake up, you have pain in the middle of the night, you barely can move. And then when you wake up, you kind of want to imagine you was just having a terrible nightmare. Because you can't even remember the, how the pain was because it was so bad. But that was the difference to me, y'all. The support systems grew on both sides of the world. I was greeted by my sister Janice. My car was looking so good, y'all. I didn't even recognize my car. I left my car dusty because all of my focus was on the motherland. 
And when I came back, my car looking so brand new. I thought it was Uber out there. <laughs> I was wondering where's my car. <laughs> but that was my car because they had, had it shining, y'all. Details so nice. And that's my brother and sister did that. Shout out to Sister Janice and Brother Milford. They so good. They sweet, loving people. So talented and so loving. It's got those kind of people here, y'all. It's not something that I just realized, but it's something that is now growing. And they, they, they are part of my family on this side of the world, too. Somebody who greets you when you get back and say, welcome home, we missed you. We're going to have to do some fun stuff together and planning on going back to the motherland together. So that that's the different part, y'all. Having my connections on this side of the world growing as well with people that actually care about my projects in the motherland. We can talk about Habasia and and also talk about some fun stuff we can do. What? Right here. Right here. Do some fun stuff in Houston while I'm here. Because even before I left, I was doing all of my cultural activities predominantly in Houston. They, they have some stuff in Galveston you can do. But it's so focused on the past with slavery and reparations and all of that. And I'm so focused on the present times and the future's time and connecting back with my roots in the motherland with the actual people that's there, <laughs> working with them to get to another level. Y'all, last time my land papers wasn't done and I was so frustrated. I was like, is this land issue gonna ever be resolved? We went to so many different places trying to get that paperwork done. And I kept doing videos telling people, don't buy land without going there first, doing your research. I told y'all I had COVID, psycho COVID psychosis and I was so feeling overwhelmed because I couldn't go anywhere with all this. Uh, what do they say? Where well, you had to uh, be in isolation away from people, control the pop control your contact with people and all that stuff. Nash you had to wear. This time, y'all was no mask there, no mask back. Uh, they gave you masks as a suggestion in an envelope, and I just put them back in my bag because nobody else was wearing it, or maybe one person. Somebody next to me speaking French that did not look like me asked for my cheese, y'all. <laughs> so I guess that was not even on his mind that he wasn't supposed to be eating other people's food. <laughs> I gave it to him, y'all. <laughs> I did, because I didn't want that cheese because it didn't have no nice soft bread that was warm to eat with it. I like my bread soft, and the airline food is just everything so almost cold, including the bread. I just don't know what's up with them. But anyway, he enjoyed it. I realize people are the same everywhere. And every time I say it, I definitely mean it. Because it reinforces my positive thoughts. It helps me to keep focusing on the bright side. I was greeted by the pilots and, and they said, Miss Purple. Because <laughs> y'all know I like purple. And everything I had on had purple in it, my head covering. In fact, it was this head covering with the purple side showing. 
my one of my favorite hair coverings. And then my dress had purple. My bag had purple. <coughs> Both of my bags. <laughs> my carry-on bag is purple. And my purse was purple, so yeah. And it said purple right, purple right. <laughs> All I could do was laugh. I say, y'all funny. Because I love me some Prince, y'all. But that they even had Prince as a point of reference was hilarious to me. Because <laughs> uh, they didn't look like me either, y'all. I was like, y'all don't speak English for a first language. Y'all y'all from Paris. Native Par Paris-looking kind of people. Uh, native French looking people and <laughs> y'all talking about purple right so anyway they just let me know yeah people are the same everywhere I didn't ride first class y'all but I had a seat <coughs> and sometimes just having a seat on the table is fine and that's how I feel. Because when I was in the airport and uh, Bruford and the Gambia, they didn't even find me on the list <laughs> for the second part of the flight. I was like, uh, I think you need to fix that because I paid for it. I had all my receipts. I showed them a note from our friends saying that I was supposed to show them my documents and they waiting for me on the flight. I said the last time I end up getting a ticket just from here to where I was going like Europe, UK, I end up being stuck in the airport for a whole day. So they like, oh, sorry. And the guy kept working in the computer. I'm happy he didn't lie and say that the computer was uh, down and he actually fixed it in the computer. And uh, then he told me to go back to the ticket agent. And she printed out my tickets as well as marked my bags to go from Paris to Houston, my final destination. And she took my address just in case I guess my baggage got lost. And I was praying, please don't let my baggage get lost. Last time, what, when I was coming back, Delta lost my luggage. Not Delta, but... Brussels Airline or whatever it was I got through cheap oil. They lost my luggage. <sighs> yeah. They had to deliver it the next day. And then this time, y'all, I had to pray, pray, pray. But I got my luggage. So that was good. So they let me know that they tried to... And they did a good job this time. So the people at the airline are getting better at fixing things themselves in the motherland instead of just dumping you in Paris and let them other people do it. Because <laughs> they all work for the same airlines, y'all. They all work for the same airlines. They're the agents for the airlines when you're in the airport and they need to act like it instead of just dumping you off at the next place and let them worry about you. They actually are starting to improve customer service as far as I'm concerned. So everything slowly by slowly is changing y'all here and in the motherland. And the people are working together. It's a it's a world, y'all. We're all interconnected. I'm not saying I'm singing Kumbaya or nothing like that. But in Habasa, we have to learn to think global. We have to learn to think global. It's not just about being there. It's about the whole process. You gotta generate funds here 
to do the good works there. When I'm here, I'm not at an Airbnb. I am saving up funds so I can take care of things here. So when I go back, things will be even better. I'm planning on going back for years in. And most how I say the same. I did my lottery ticket last night in person. Because when I tried to do it on the app, it was too late. Because I kept contemplating doing it. Contemplating doing it. And time was going so fast, I went to the buy groceries so I could fix me some gumbo. And yes, it was good, y'all. I think it'll be better today because I like my food leftovers because the seasoning go in fine. And if it's missing something, you can just fix it in your bowl. Just add some more spice. <clears throat> sometimes, y'all, my taste buds just messed up. Being a diabetic is no fun sometimes. But sometimes your taste buds just screwed up. But anyway, y'all, when I went shopping, I didn't really get a sticker shock. I found one I needed, and the prices was pretty much the same as when I left. I didn't get eggs in the first place. Stay tuned for part three, y'all. <laughs> Sorry about the way the video is getting edited, but if I go anyways past 30 minutes, it's hard to upload. I don't know if YouTube have it set up that way, but y'all, it goes from having just a few minutes left to you got 37 hours before it uploads. So then you have to delete it and start all over again. So this is the end of part two. Part three is coming up. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching.